The Clone Wars saw both the Republic and the Confederacy of Independent Systems field massive new warships which had hereto been rare. Even the Republic Star Destroyers, the backbone of their rebuilt navy, were considerably larger than the go-to cruisers and heavy cruisers of past wars. But even Star Destroyers seemed small next to the Malevolence. The first flagship of General Grievous was one of the largest vessels of its time, a 5 km long dreadnought of unimaginable power. Most fans of Star Wars The Clone Wars are familiar with this ship, but few know the full history of the Malevolence, the secrets that lay within the mighty vessel, and the fatal flaw that brought it to its knees. In this video, we'll be discussing this and more. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The story of the Malevolence began with a Celestan shipwright named Ruggle Schmong. For years, Schmong was enraptured with the idea of a starship powered primarily by recaptured waste heat, recycling its energy to ensure that nothing went to waste. He came up with the design for a power plant and presented it to Sorosu, the shipbuilding corporation that practically controlled Schmong's homeworld, but Sorosu executives dismissed Schmong and his ideas. His power plant, they argued, would need to be enormous and would need to regularly vent the energy it recaptured. In other words, Schmong's design would only work for a truly massive ship, either be a mining vessel or a warship. Sorosub had no interest in either. The CIS did, however. What Sorosub saw as flaws in Schmong's design were seen by separatist military leaders as assets. They would use his plant to power one of the largest warships the galaxy had ever seen, and they would solve the energy venting problem by hooking up the reactor to a pair of massive ion pulse cannons. Happy that someone was interested in his work, Schmong designed a warship around his reactor to the separatist specifications, dubbing his design a subjugator class heavy cruiser. Count Zuku commissioned two of these great dreadnoughts, naming them Malevolence and Devastation. Both were built in massive underground dry docks on Pemant, a separatist Quarren colony, by the Free DAC Volunteer Engineering Corps, a Quarren separatist organization that built warships to raise funds for insurgents on Mon Cala. The warships were built in strict secrecy, such that not even the Republic's best spies could peek inside the dry dock or learn anything about the warships. The ships were completed in late 22 BBY. The devastation was kept in reserve for months and its tale is beyond the scope of this video, but the malevolence was deployed right away. Count Du christened it the flagship of the Confederate Navy, and General Grievous took command of the vessel. Zuku oversaw the vessel's first few outings, however, and ordered Grievous to keep the vessel's nature a secret. Before we continue with the story of the malevolence, let's take a quick look at the ship's specs. At 4,845 meters in length, the ship was formally classed as a dreadnought, and at the time of its launch, it was the largest vessel in the CIS Navy. However, a lot of the malevolence was actually hollow. The vast network of reactors, ancillary power generators, power storage batteries, and heat sinks that composed Schmong's power plant ran the length of the ship, contained within a vast cavity which was necessary for the heat recapturing technology to work. The aft portion of the ship was dominated by the propulsion reactors, hyperdrive, and engine block, which contained a total of 16 huge engines. Parts of the front half were also given over to great cavities for the reactor systems, especially around the ion cannon. Maglev trains led through these large open spaces, linking the crude decks of the ship together. For such a massive vessel, the Malevolence had a tiny crew. Due to extensive automation, only 900 droids were required to crew the vessel, according to sourcebooks. That's a little more than a tenth of the crew of a Veneta class Star Destroyer. Most of the crew was concentrated around the vessel's bridges, of which there were three. The main bridge sat at the top of the aft conning tower, one of the few parts of the aft section of the ship that was actually crewed, surrounded by point defense batteries. The Malevolence also had a secondary bridge above the ion cannon overlooking the vessel's forward turbolaser batteries and a tertiary bridge on the lower section of the ship's prow. Apart from the bridges, 
The bulk of the Malevolence's habitable sections were located toward the fore of the ship, in front of the ion cannon, with the rest located in a narrow band just aft of the cannon. The Malevolence featured an impressive array of sensors and tractor beams, and its communication systems allowed it to establish a holonet connection with relays in real space while in hyperspace, which wasn't possible aboard most ships. It also featured an impressive array of hangars, some of which were general purpose, and some reserved for specific operations. The general purpose hangars were located in the clusters aft of the ion cannon. These provided housing for visiting personal vessels and the Malevolence's pod hunters, squadrons of rocket battle droids in boarding craft that destroyed escape pods. There were several larger hangars in the lower section of the ship's prow. These were reserved for vulture droids and landing craft. A massive army of battle droids was stored in the decks between these hangars, ready to be activated and deployed. It's unknown if the Malevolence's ground armies were ever deployed, but at the very least, this dreadnought had the potential to single-handedly conquer entire planets. The Malevolence's primary weapon was its Ion Pulse Cannon, a huge superweapon capable of disabling entire flotilla of Star Wars destroyers at once. Though it appeared from the outside that the ship had two cannons, one starboard and one port, these were actually the ends of one huge ion cannon capable of sending out ion pulses to either side. Once the cannon disabled enemy vessels, the Malevolence's turbo lasers would finish them off. The Malevolence had an insane array of secondary weapons, totaling about 500 double-barreled turbo laser cannons of various sizes. Most of these cannons were located in huge artillery formations atop the vessel's bow, while many more lined the Malevolence's side. This array of turbo lasers was just as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than the ship's ion cannon, capable of obliterating fleets in seconds. The Malevolence also had five-point defense laser cannon batteries, all located around the ship's primary bridge. Count Zuku intended for the Malevolence to be a psychological weapon first and foremost, a terrifying threat that would rampage across the Republic, destroying fleets and terrorizing loyalists. Zuku's plan was to create such fear of the mystery of the weapon among the Republic citizens that the Republic Navy would be forced to waste time and resources hunting the vessel, allowing the Confederacy to gain ground on other fronts. The Malevolence's rampage began in the Fu system in the Southern Core, deep in Republic space. There, Grievous ambushed a flotilla of Star Destroyers led by Jedi General Ares Noon, jamming their communications and disabling their ships with the Ion Cannon. The Malevolence then tore the Doom ships apart and sent out pod hunters to ensure there were no survivors. The attack at Fu was followed by several others, all of which followed the same pattern. As expected, Loyalists all over the Republic panicked, and the Republic Navy was tasked with hunting the weapon down. The Malevolence successfully destroyed several other Republic task forces before coming into contact with Plo Koon's fleet in the Abrogado system. Grievous destroyed Koon's Star Destroyers, but the Jedi Master himself was able to escape thanks to Anakin Skywalker, after which Plo Koon revealed the true nature of the Malevolence to the galaxy. Count Zuku was disappointed by this turn of events, but he ordered Grievous to continue his rampage across Republic space anyway. After the Battle of Abrogado, Grievous became bolder, destroying larger Republic fleet groups in more heavily trafficked systems. After Abrogado, the Malevolence destroyed fleets at Vanek, Iktor, and Vondar, chasing Republic forces up and down the Rimmer trade route. Grievous commanded the Malevolence to great effect, but he found, to his frustration, that the experimental power plant it was built around had a few issues. It frequently suffered from energy leaks, and firing the ion cannon sometimes caused power surges that knocked out the Malevolence's own communications, shields, and other important systems. The ship was sometimes unpredictable and not entirely stable, and Grievous considered its droid crew subpar. Still, the Malevolence proved to be even more destructive than the Separatists had hoped, and so the campaign continued. After wiping out a medical convoy at Rindelia, Grievous received a new assignment from Dooku. He was to use the Malevolence to destroy the Kalida Shoals medical station, wiping out the wounded clones housed there. Upon arriving in system, however, he found a squadron of Y-Wing bombers led by Anakin Skywalker waiting for him. 
He dispatched vulture droids to deal with them while the malevolence disabled and destroyed medical transports fleeing the systems, and then turned the ion cannon on the surviving starfighters when the droids failed to stop Skywalker. Skywalker and several other Y-Wings survived however, and as Grievous turned his attention to the medical station, they began an attack run against the malevolence. They attempted to destroy the bridge but were repulsed by the ship's defensive batteries and ended up bombing the ion cannon instead. When Grievous tried to fire the damaged ion cannon, it misfired and destroyed itself. In a matter of moments, Ruggle Schmong's power plant went from being an asset to a liability. The destruction of the ion cannon caused a chain reaction that ravaged the malevolence, though the warship remained spaceworthy. Several key systems, including the hyperdrive, were disabled by power surges caused by the cannon's destruction. The malevolence was badly damaged, and when the Republic Navy arrived on the scene, it had no choice but to turn tail and run. The Navy gave chase, peppering the dreadnought with turbo laser fire, but the massive vessel, damaged though it was, was able to shrug off this assault. In the end, it took an infiltration mission to bring this behemoth down. Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi boarded the Malevolence during the pursuit, hoping to prevent Grievous from escaping and to rescue Padme Amidala, who had been captured by the Dreadnought. Amidala was rescued, and Skywalker sabotaged the warship's navy computer before the three of them fled back to the Republic fleet. When the Malevolence tried to jump to hyperspace, it flew into the dead moon of Antar instead. After just a few weeks, its rampage was over though this fearsome dreadnought certainly left its mark on the galaxy. The Malevolence was probably one of the coolest warships of the Clone Wars, in our opinion. But what do you think? Are there other Clone Wars warships you'd like us to make a video about? Let us know all that and more in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.